What's up guys, it's Dwayne back again for another video, back here for the reaction and today's a great, wonderful, beautiful, amazing day because it's another Germany day. 10 more German brands you pronounce wrong. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction, let's go. Hey, are you feeling any better yet? Yes, a little. So, which one of these soups do you want me to get you? I think mm. this one by Norris sounds pretty good. I don't see that. Oh, you mean Knorr? Yeah, the green one right here. Yeah, that works. Also, uh, do you have a hair dryer that I could use? Because I'm about to take a shower. Of course, you can just use the brown one that's in the bathroom. Um, and hey, do you want me to bring you any aspirin? Braun, okay. And uh, bring me what? Aspirin, the pink color. Oh, that's how you guys say aspirin? Aspirin. I like the way you guys say it, man. Aspirin. Hello, We'd servus, and welcome well. back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've Munich. been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. A while back, I made a video about... By the way, someone says, and Munich's in the south of Germany, right? Someone said, I sound, when I try and speak German, <laughs> the few lines I know in German. Someone in the comment section said, I sound like someone from South Germany, which was interesting. I don't know how true that is. About 15 German brands that most Americans pronounce incorrectly, or let's say at least not the way that they're actually pronounced in German. And when I first came to the US, it was really weird for this me to really hear some of these German brand names pronounced so differently that I sometimes didn't even understand what people were saying. <laughs> kind of like this. Hey, what's up? I just bought some new Adidas shoes. What shoes? Adidas? The brand? Yeah, literally. I mean, Adidas is something we don't say. We say, we say Adidas. So Adidas is just weird. It's just Americans. It's just Americans. Never heard weird. of it. I got them right here. What do you think? Oh, oh Adidas. Okay. Adidas. Um, yeah, they're pretty dope. I got some amazing feedback from you guys for that video. And it was also fun to see that a lot of people didn't even know before that brands like Adidas, Puma, Nivea, or even Aldi were no German. Clue. If you haven't yeah. seen the video yet, you can find the link in the info box below or just click up here on the little eye. But I couldn't fit all the brands that are worth mentioning into one single video. And that's why today I have 10 more German brands for you that you probably pronounce right. wrong. And I also include Included the brands that you guys suggested and asked me about in the comments. The first German Let's brand name that English native speakers pronounce differently than we do in Germany is the language app Babbel, which is the sponsor of today's video, so oh, a Babbel. big shout out to them. In English speaking countries, they go by Babbel, like I just said it, whereas in Germany, we actually say Babbel. Now, the German verb Babbel. Babbel. We say, we, we say, say it like that. Ah, we have that in common. I said we'd say babel. We wouldn't say babel. As she said it, babel. Is more of a regional word that is mainly known to be part of the Hessian dialect, but some other regions use this word too, and it means to chatter or to babble. So yes, the English word babble actually means the exact same thing as babbeln in German, which is why babbel. the name of the language oh. app works perfectly in both languages. I know that you guys are very interested in pronunciation okay. and languages in general, and that's why I'm very glad that Babbel could sponsor this video because whether you want to learn a language to connect with your heritage. I know many of you guys have German. Great sponsor. German heritage or to invest in your professional growth or maybe just for future travel plans and self-improvement, Babbel is the best language app to do this with. They use language that is actually used in real life situations and conversations, which is great because traditional textbooks oftentimes teach a rather formal and kind of outdated version of the language. I have to commend her. This is a great sponsor and the way she's incorporated it into the video. I know this is not me reviewing the video in that sense. Well, it is kind of, I'm reacting to it. But like, this is a great sponsor. Well done, girl. <laughs> well done. That's what it was like with my French and English books in school growing up. And on Babbel, you can choose from all of these different lessons, like topic related ones about where you're from, for example. This right here is from the German beginner level, or even- I could learn, I, maybe I should learn German on Babbel. I'm going to do that during the Christmas period. I'm going to learn some German. What do you guys think? And I'm going to try, try, <laughs> try it out in front of you guys. Ah, that's it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to download Babbel. Or there's, an, there's another language app 
um, which I'll try. And um, I'll try to learn a few German lines. And then I will try it out. And you guys can tell me how bad I did. <laughs> Even pronunciation lessons like this one about the German umlauts. Each lesson is only 10 to 15 minutes long, so they're short and fun. Okay. And studies have shown that 15 Babel lessons equal one semester of college Spanish. Now, besides the lessons, you also get okay. access to things <clears throat> like podcasts and games. So it's really a full learning ecosystem with tons of variety depending on how you learn best. And on top of that, you can even... Has anyone learned a language though actually just using one of these apps? I'd love to know that. Hmm and book live classes with real certified teachers. Now Babbel has this amazing offer for you guys. All you have to do is click on the link in the info box below and when you sign up for six months, you'll get six months for free. And with that, let's dive into my list of 10 okay. German brand names that most people pronounce wrong and let's find out if you're one of them. Now, last Let's time when see. I talked about the German discount supermarket Aldi, I briefly also mentioned Aldi. Lidl, but I didn't go into detail Lidl. at all. And you guys asked me we in the Lidl. comments how to pronounce it correctly. Most Americans I know say something like little, while Lidl. the correct German pronunciation is Lidl. It might be a little Lidl. hard to say, but I think it helps to know Lidl. that both of the L sounds are light L's that you pronounce with the top of your tongue. So it's Lidl. Lidl, Lidl instead of Lidl. In Germany, they've been around for decades, but in the US, they only opened their first location in 2017. So many of you guys have probably never even seen a Lidl store here. We don't have one here in the Cincinnati area either, but fortunately we have two Aldi locations and I actually do. We have Lidl and we have Aldi in the UK. Both of them. In fact, they're like, they're like in competition with each other most of my grocery shopping there because the prices are significantly lower than at your normal American grocery store. Mm. And I just love the concept of being in and out of there within 20 minutes or less. ID actually has over 2000 stores in the US while Lidl only has around 100 currently. To give you guys a little background information, Lidl is the main competitor of ID and they basically copied yeah. the concept of ID, which had been around for about 10 years when Lidl first opened up in ah. 1973 the history of the company goes way back to the 1860s though. The initial store was called Lidl und Zieh Südfrüchtenhandlung and was located in Heilbronn in the state of Baden-Württemberg. That is a long Südfrüchtenhandlung. 1930, the local merchant Josef Schwarz joined the company, which was then renamed Lidl und Schwarz KG, and it became a wholesale business. After it was completely destroyed in World War II, they rebuilt the business within 10 years and then opened their first discounter retail store in 1968. And from the beginning, they had both their smaller discounter stores with a rather limited selection called Lidl and their bigger full range stores called Kaufland and both of these ah. stores still exist to this day. The next one that many of you guys asked about is a beer brand or a brewery from my hometown Munich and it's spelled like this. I'm assuming the umlaut letters is what throws most of you guys off and I can totally Lidl understand that. that because those are really difficult sounds yeah. to make for non-German speakers. Well. So I've heard Americans pronounce this brand many different ways, especially because I've been to Oktoberfest with Americans and this tent by this brewery is actually one of the more popular ones among tourists. Let's phrase it that way. Not necessarily my first choice, but they usually try and say something like, Lowenbrau, 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 something along those lines, which might be kind of hard to understand for German native speakers, especially if it's mentioned out of context. The correct German pronunciation is Löwenbräu. Löwenbräu. The Ö is like making an O sound so and then you kind of close your mouth a little like right. this. O, Ö, O, Ö. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I feel really dumb doing this. And then the A umlaut U diphthong is pronounced oi, so like O-I in English, like in coin. What's also important to know here is that the German W is pronounced like an English V, so yeah. V, and the R is pronounced in the back of your throat, like in French, but if you can do a rolled R like in Spanish, that works too. So then if you put it all together, it's Löwenbräu. 
Löwenbräu. But if you can even do something like Löwenbräu or something along those lines, German native speakers will probably be able to understand what you're saying and that's really all that matters. Now I also got some requests to explain how other German breweries are pronounced, such as this one, or this, or this one, and some people... Weissteiner? Right? Wrong? Let me know in the comment section. Um, ooh. Hacke... Heike, Heike, Heike Pistor, Pistor, Heike Pistor. Let me know in the comment section. This is me guessing. Um, Weihensteifner, Weihensteifner. Let me know if that's correct in the comment section. I am just kind of guessing. Let's Some people how, also well asked how Hefeweizen, which is a type of beer, is pronounced correctly. And I figured since it would be a little much to squeeze all of that into this video, would you guys want me to make a video just about the pronunciation of German beer breweries and beer types and maybe yeah. some background knowledge about it too? Let me know in the comments below. But to get back to Löwenbräu, the name was first mentioned in the 1700s, which actually makes it one of the newer traditional Munich breweries. I know it's pretty old for American standards, but a predecessor of the brewery was first mentioned in the 1500s. Mm. The next one is actually the world's largest insurance company. It's based in Germany and it's also the namesake of a big soccer arena in Munich. Most Americans call it Allianz, but the correct German... We would say Alliance. Alliance? Alliance? Alliance in, in England, I think most people would say like that. Pronunciation is Allianz, and Allianz. the Allianz Arena is Allianz Arena in German. Its Allianz official name Arena. is Allianz SE, and it's one of the oldest insurance companies in Germany, founded okay. in the year 1890. It was founded what? in my hometown Munich, which is also where their headquarters are today, but they actually started the business in Berlin and then expanded quickly to other countries such as England and the US. In the following years, they went public, and soon afterwards, they had to pay out huge amounts of insurance money to victims of the San Francisco earthquake in 1906. Uh, and also in 1912 after the sinking of the Titanic. During the Nazi era then they had very close connections to the NSDAP and even to Hitler personally. Their board chair Kurt Schmidt even became the Minister of Economics of the Third Reich in 1933 and he also became an SS honorary member. After 1940 Allianz also insured a lot of parts of the concentration camps such as armament sites, inmate shacks, material store and vehicle fleets and they also came out to inspect them regularly. They also profited by taking over Jewish insurance houses and their clients whenever they got deported. Today Allianz operates in over 70 countries, has more than 100 million customers wow. worldwide and they also created a... I'm always intrigued to think like how do these companies last so long? Like companies that have been around since they're like 18 whatever. It's like what? Like... That is impressive because most companies just disappear within 10 years. But to be around for like 100, over 100 years is, is very impressive. Permanent exhibition on the internet and in person about their actions during the Nazi era. Now let's get to the brand that you guys mentioned by far the most in the comments. Siemens. Now, the reason why Siemens. I didn't include this in my first video is that to <laughs> German ears... Yeah, we'd say Siemens. People really don't pronounce this terribly wrong. Now, I've gotten really? so many comments from people saying that non-Germans pronounce this brand name so differently. And some people even said that to their ears, it sounded like the English word Siemen. Siemens. Yeah, that's how we say it. Semen. And I mean, that might be true, but to German ears, it's really just a very minor difference. Germans pronounce it with a voiced S, which would be a Z in English, Siemens, while English speakers pronounce it with a voiceless S. Siemens. Siemens. In English, that's a pretty significant difference, and it's usually indicated by using the letter Z, which makes a Z sound, or an S, which makes a S sound. sound. But in German, the letter S can be pronounced both ways, and uh. even in one and the same word, it's sometimes pronounced differently in different German dialects and accents. People who speak Bavarian dialect, for example, would say Siemens with a voiceless S, just like people do in English. Oh, servus. Du, ich hab gehört, du arbeitest jetzt bei Siemens? 
So long story short, in comparison to Adidas versus Adidas or Nivea versus Nivea, where it might be hard for Germans to even follow what you're trying to say, Siemens versus Siemens, Siemens. to us is tomato tomato. So yeah. I personally wouldn't even say that Americans pronounce this one wrong. To give you guys some more information okay. about the All company, Brits. Siemens is actually the largest industrial manufacturing company in Telephone. Europe and it's headquartered in Munich just like Allianz is, but they also have many branch offices abroad. Their products include trains, motors, compressors oh, and yeah. even medical diagnostics equipment and they also used to make telephones we always had Siemens to. phones at home for our landline, but they don't make those anymore. The company was founded in that. 1847, so a while back, wow. by Werner von Siemens, an electrical engineer and inventor, and Johann Georg Halske, who was a mechanic. Together, they built the first... I just, I just find it impressive, these long-standing co companies. ...long-distance telegraph line in Europe, which was 500 kilometers long from Berlin to Frankfurt am Main. And since then, the company produced a lot of successful and relevant products. Along with Siemens, many people also wanted me to include Bosch in the video. And Bosch. again, I didn't include this one in the first video because as a native German speaker, I really don't think that Americans pronounce this brand wrong per se. Americans usually say Bosch, while Germans say Bosch. So the vowel is pronounced Bosch. just a little... So Brits say a lot closer to Germans. A bit differently here. Bosch, Bosch. Bosch. It's kind of how my friend Josh and I both pronounce his name differently, depending on whether we speak English or German. Josh. We either say Josh in English or Josh in German. By the See, she said that in English. No, no, no. But actual English. Real English. Real English English from England. <laughs> we would say Josh. We say Josh. We won't say Josh. We say Josh. Just like German people say Josh. So, yeah, it's the same. By the way, if you haven't checked out my podcast, Understanding Train Station, that I host together look with Josh. At, look at her. She's got podcasts. She's doing, she's doing sponsored videos. Go, girl. She's doing really well. Definitely should. The link is in the info box or you can just she's click up really here. Well. Now, Bosch is an engineering and technology company headquartered in Gerlingen Don't in the state of Baden-Württemberg. And the company and was founded in 1886 by Robert Bosch. It started out as a small workshop in the back courtyard. But over the years, the company has become a leading automotive supplier. And just like almost oh, all the of cars. these old German companies no? that survived World War II, Bosch was a company that profited from the Nazi regime. They produced armaments in shadow okay. factories that were built in close cooperation with the Nazi authorities. And in the last years of the war, there wasn't a single new German tank that drove without the Bosch starter elements. Okay. Check it past. The next company has invented a product that probably every single one of you has taken before at some point in your life. It's the pharmaceutical company Bayer and the product I'm talking about is the painkiller aspirin. Now that was the English pronunciation, aspirin. but the correct German pronunciation would actually be Bayer, Bayer, and the medicine Bayer. is called aspirin in German, aspirin. aspirin. Bayer is one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world and they're headquartered in Leverkusen. Their name is also Leverkusen. part of the soccer club Bayer Leverkusen, which is actually Bayer a Leverkusen. subsidiary of Bayer, so they own it. The company was founded in 1863 and they actually invented aspirin, These which is their best known product. Mate, like I don't even know, like there's a lot of like really old companies in Germany that have survived to survive the war. You definitely have to like <laughs> help uh, the Nazis in their uh, their <laughs> their um, regime, but I mean, business loves war. Some businesses really adapt and do very well during war times, and some businesses fail. I guess you have a strong business business if it's a business that can withstand pandemics and war and just natural. Um, like like um, recessions, 
then you've got a really solid solid business. Product to this day. Besides that, they also created the first widely used antibiotic, Prontosil, and they also trademarked the name heroin in 1898 and marketed okay. it as a cough suppressant and non-addictive substitute for morphine until 1910. Obviously, that's not what heroin is known as today. And no. even though bioscientists were not the first ones to make heroin, the company did lead the way in commercializing it. It's not a good legacy, is it? <laughs> This one you guys definitely know from the condiments or the instant food aisle at the grocery store. Americans pronounce it Knorr, but since it's no. a German brand, the correct pronunciation is actually Knorr. Knorr. Yeah, I mean, we know that as like, they, they make soup, don't they? They make soup and they make um, stock cubes, I think. Knorr, the K is not Knorr. silent here. Knorr was founded in 1838 by Karl Heinrich Theodor Knorr and is headquartered in Heilbronn, Germany. They mainly produce dehydrated soup and meal mixes, bouillon cubes, condiments, dressings, yeah. and frozen meals. Do -do 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 -do. Did you recognize it? That was supposed to be the jingle Nokia? of the German telecommunications company Telekom, oh. or as Americans would say, Telecom. By revenue, they're the say, largest telecom. Isn't Nokia like Finnish? But Telecom, also T, oh, Telecom. Um, T-Mobile, as we would refer to it in the UK, although we don't have T-Mobile anymore communications provider in Europe and they also operate here in the US with one of their subsidiaries T-Mobile or as Americans would say T-Mobile. So let's get this straight. Mobile. It's a German company yet they chose an English name for the subsidiary but even though it's English it's pronounced differently in Germany and the US. T-Mobile versus T-Mobile. What? But it's, we, we pronounce it in Eng England T-Mobile. I, I cannot tell you, but I do know that in the UK, people pretty much pronounce it like we do in Germany. They say, well done. Yes, we do. A T-Mobile. So yeah, that was really weird for me when I first came to the States yep. and I actually got a phone plan at T-Mobile and I was 100% sure that I knew how to pronounce this brand just to find out that for some unknown reasons, Americans tend to pronounce the word mobile as mobile. By the mobile. way, T-Mobile US is one of the biggest cell phone providers in the States next to AT&T and Verizon and they've been around here since 2001 when Telecom took over the American company VoiceStream. Okay. Speaking of T-Mobile T-Mobile, I had to include Playmobil, which is a German line of toys Playmobil. produced by the Brandstetter Group in Zirndorf, Germany. Playmobil was first introduced to the German market in 1974 and they quickly exported and licensed their products internationally. They're a major competitor to Lego toys, Lego in German by the way, which are originally Lego. from Denmark. Now just like T-Mobile, they picked a Never heard of this brand before ever. An English name for this, Playmobil, but unlike Playmobil. how they did it with T-Mobile, they kept the German pronunciation of it for the American market too. In the US commercials, they call it Playmobil as well, even though in everyday life, I've also heard Americans pronounce it as Playmobil, which sounds very different and somewhat wrong. <laughs> if you've ever bought a hairdryer or an electric razor in the US, or in any other country really, you've yeah. probably come across the brand Braun, which is a German cons- Oh, Braun. Do you know what? It looks German as well. You know when you look at things and you like, you just don't, it never connects when I see a brand name. But now she said it, I'm like, of course it's German. It looks German. It sounds German. Braun, we say Braun or Braun. Braun, we'd probably say Braun in Britain, we'd say Braun. Consumer products company founded in 1921 and based in Kronberg im Taunus. They're particularly wow. well known for their industrial product design from the mid 20th century, which included electric razors and mm. record players. Now, I honestly always thought that Americans pronounce this one pretty much like we do in Germany, Braun or Brown with an American accent, which would have made sense because Braun is the German word for the color brown, but when I did some research for this video, it turned out that Americans and British people too actually pronounced this brand 
brawn or brawn 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 something along those lines yeah, yeah. which sounds really weird to my ears Braun. fun fact brawn was actually bought by the american gillette company which was then bought by procter and gamble in 2005 oh. so today brawn actually belongs to procter and gamble which is located in cincinnati ohio which is where i am right now so we've kind I have of no come clue full circle gillette, gillette and brown or brown uh brown <laughs> is owned by PNG. I have no clue. Please let me know in the comments below what other German brands people usually mispronounce for the next part of the series or which German brand names you just generally want to know how to pronounce. Thank that was really, 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 really good. There's a few, jets, few brands that Brits pronounce exactly the same, but there are quite a few that we don't. So interesting, isn't it? Like language and just, you know... There is definitely a crossover. Uh, Brits definitely pronounce more brand names similar to German than the Americans do. Which makes sense because we're so close. We're just across the water, so it makes sense. But yeah, awesome. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a great Christmas if I don't see you before then. Until the next one, I will see you very soon.